Hey guys, I'm Outcast. I've got over a thousand hours on Phoenix and I've one tricked him to Radiant multiple times. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play him effectively and some tips and tricks that you can use in your ranked games to get the advantage. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with Phoenix Wall. So Phoenix's wall is good for two things. It's good for when you're down low on HP, just heal up. And it's also good for getting your team from point A to point B. Now, something you can note with this wall is that there's sometimes gaps in between this and you can actually use this to your advantage. So if you're ever throwing a Phoenix wall and you think that someone might scale up with your wall, that's not your teammate. You can always create a little gap in the wall like this and hold for their scale. So say I'm a defender, right? And I maybe switch. If I see this wall, maybe I want to scale Jenny and take space with this wall and maybe catch a, an attacker off guard. And to counteract that, as Phoenix, you can throw that wall up and hold the gap that it creates and potentially get a free pick with someone scaling up trying to take space from it. Onto the Molly. So the Molly is good for two things. It's good for healing, just like the wall, and it's good for denying space. And now when you're using your Molly to deny space, try not to swing in the open and get your head tapped. It's going to be really unfortunate when you die and you're going to be a man down. So try to throw your util from a safe spot. And also, when you're using your molly, uh, try not to throw it recklessly and just randomly. Um, you want to make sure that you use it to deny time from the opposition so your team can either rotate or for you to reposition into a better spot. Now we're going to be talking about using your molly on attack. So typically for me, I like to use my molly before I'm on site just to make my life a little bit more easy and not having to worry about these angles that are possibly 50-50s, such as this one right here. I like to molly this side, this way I don't have to worry about clearing it because I know my molly cleared it. And all I have to do is prioritize the right side. And then if you have an initiator that clears this out for you, then you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is use it on site. And just clear on angle, this way you and your team don't have to commit a body to clearing this angle. This is one more thing off the checklist. You just can swing at the tube or clear backside. So please make sure that you use your molly to clear out certain angles. This way you or your team don't have to die to it. Let's talk about Phoenix's flash. So Phoenix's flash, in my opinion, is pretty misused. Every time I see someone playing Phoenix, I see them flash super close to the angle, such as this. And the problem I have with this is that the enemy team coming up long or wherever you're playing, they get to react to the whole loop of the flash because of how close you're standing to the angle. So for me, I like to stand further back, allowing the flash to not show as much of the animation, which will most likely flash them more than this one will. You also don't only have to flash horizontally. Try to add some verticality to your flash to stay unpredictable. Now on to bank flashing. So how to bank flash? What you want to do is you want to stand against the wall and flash the opposite way that you want to swing. So since I want to swing right here, I'm going to be flashing left, vice versa. If I want to swing left, I'm going to flash right. Now why do I like this flash? So this flash is really useful for being able to keep your crosser still rather than having to swing and reposition your crosser every time you flash. You also get to act off of your flash way faster with a bank flash than a normal flash. Also, when you're using this flash, try to be aware of your teammates around you and let them know that you're going to be doing a flash that might affect them. Or just try to do it when no one's around because it could get your teammates killed if you don't calm it. So just try to be aware of that. Now I'm going to show you guys the reverse flash. So in order to reverse flash, you want to flash the opposite way that you'll be swinging. Now the reason I like this flash is because the enemy team might be looking away from this flash. So if I flash like that, it gives the enemy team a lot of time to turn from it. And I might be able to catch them off guard while their their backs are towards me. And it might give me a free pick. And if they don't turn from it, I, can, I just get to kill them while they flash. It's, it's that simple. I love this flash because it's so versatile and you can flash literally wherever you want and you don't have to worry about it. When entry fragging on Phoenix, make sure that you use at least two pieces of util to entry to site. 
This makes it way easier for your team to go out and for yourself to entry. After clearing close left and close right and closing switch, make sure that you scale the site and clear it for your planner. This way they don't die when trying to get the bomb down. So let's talk about Phoenix's ult on attack. So on attack, you're going to want to grab the orbs as much as possible. This way you maximize the amount of times you have the ult in the half. And the reason this is important is because Phoenix's ult is super useful for getting your team on the site because it's an extra body that doesn't cost a life and it will clear so much space for you as long as you use it properly. In ulting, always make sure that you clear the close left and close right angles. This way your team doesn't have to worry about it. And also try to prioritize closing switches if they're on the map. This way your team doesn't have to put a body on them and get caught in the open. My ready. When you're using Phoenix's ult, you really want to prioritize doing the dirty work for your team. So another thing you can do with Phoenix's ult is planning the bomb. Now this might seem like a waste of your ult, but it's really not. Getting that bomb down is super important and it allows your team to not get picked off while planting the bomb. And your team can stay main and play for post plant. Now one thing I want to note with Phoenix's ult is that you want to treat it like it's your actual life. And the reason I say this is because I see a lot of Phoenixes just going out with their ult without using any util. And the problem with this is that you're just going to die instantly and then your ult's going to be pretty much worthless because you cleared no space with it. So try to make sure that you use util with your ult. This way you can actually get something with it. So when defending with Phoenix, you're going to want to try to use your flash or any of your util to take space and grab the orb as much as possible. And the reason you want to grab the orb is that you want it for retake. And the more times you have your ult for retake, the more likely you're going to win the round. When retaking with Phoenix, always try to make sure to use your ult if you have it. Use your molly to clear out certain angles and use your flash to get you on the side. Try to clear out the hard angles for your team. This way they don't have to worry about it and commit a body to it and possibly die. And when playing defense with Phoenix, try not to play the same site every single round. You want to switch it up and play everywhere across the map. And the reason this is important is because if you keep doing the same play every round and flashing main every single round, they're going to start to read you and they're going to start countering it. Alright, that's about it for me guys. If you learned anything new, make sure to leave a like, comment what you learned, and drop a sub. Talk to you guys later. Have a great day.